everyone, and welcome back to some more Tales of Arise. I think it's time for us to unlock the history. Uh, sure. Okay, I guess it's time for us to fight a boss fight. And then maybe unlock the history of what Alfred went through on Linagus. Oh, it's gonna be his. Yeah, it's gonna be her. She's been. Faria! How did you over. get in here? Wait, something about her isn't right. What's wrong with her? She doesn't even seem to know where she is. Yeah, you're right. She looks just like the soldiers we encountered outside. I've got this uh, dark orb. I've summoned Bahamut. Not Bahamut. Okay, I don't know what that is. A summoning? But that's preposterous. She never had that kind of power when- We can talk later. Here it comes. Okay, tormented what? limbs. I've never known Faria to control symbols like that before. How about with a stone that looks suspiciously like a master core? Where did she get our hands on that? First we handle the tube. Then we get some answers. Water, here we go. I'm not done. Fire, maybe this one. Eternal devastation. Take my with black and gray. Sword with ice ready. Can't be stopped. Take this. Severing wind. Water ready. Point black. Annihilation. Take this. Can you take it? Water ice black. Get into the wind. Come on. Come on. Severing wind. Seven eye off one. Let's not get hit by whatever that is. That could easily be fatal. Just as well, I'm here to stop. So it's definitely weak to uh, looks like light. Oh, which makes sense because it's summer from dark. Oh. That hurt. Damn, we are hammering this thing. Oh shit. I think I got it. Yeah. Get that burning pillar. Flaming pillar. Fire. God, this thing still has so many hit points. Hey, we got a core break. Oh, he recovered very fast. In a bind. Oh, go! Woo! Oh, damn it. Dodge! Alright, well. At least I didn't get hit by it. Oh shit! Got out half. Water bullet. What? Did I knock him out of it? I did not. I definitely did not. Definitely did not. 
Oh, Jesus. Waiting for the heal. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll heal myself. <laughs> I guess. Do we have an AO we have an AoE heal, don't we? There we go. Oh, that's just one. I thought I had AoE heals. I must have used them. Shoot. That move is very upsetting. I'm so used to being able to knock them out of their current move when you counter and break them, but not the case here. Jesus. I'm alright. Still stand. In a bind. Wait, that hit me? Him getting ready to do an attack? Oh shit. Run one move. Got it. We almost got this. Just keep doing some combos. Uh, Jesus. We do. We do got him on the run, that's for sure. Go get him, Rimwell. I should probably heal you. Oh, come on. I wasn't even in the AoE. Oh, shit. Gotcha again, buddy. Ah, uh, still call me. I was trying to time it that time. Because it's not immediate. There's like a second before the attack actually hits you there. Okay, I'll res myself. Oh boy, oh boy, boy, boy. Xion. We almost got this. There it is. We got it. Now it's just her. Faria, can you hear me? Faria. I don't think she can hear anybody. She's preparing another summoning. The arch she's casting kill her. is way too powerful to control. Got to kill her. Rate, her body won't be able to take much more. <laughs> Forgive me. Or that. I guess that works too.
Man, I thought we were goners. Everything okay? Yes. She's only unconscious. Not her. I meant you. Shion, please. Can you treat her? I can try, but I can't promise she'll be back to her real self when she wakes up. All I can do is heal her physically. We're not even supposed to be in here. Maybe it'd be better if we moved her to somewhere a little safer. Don't you think? In that case... I'll take her off your hands. You? Avakir, what are you doing here? The hell is he doing? Is everyone in here? I was curious what you were up to, so I took the liberty of following you to find out. This forbidden I place that no one's supposed to enter? I about Tarnigan, about how he really died. I'm sorry, I had no idea. And you believed me? What makes you so sure I wasn't lying? I like to think I know you a little better than that, Dohalim. Give me some credit. <laughs> I'll take Faria. Leave her with me. I know better than to ask what you're up to. But whatever it is, I hope it all works out. Thank you. He seems like a good friend. He hasn't changed. He never was one to stand out. Instead, he was always hanging back, worrying about everyone else. As for Faria, it's always the closest to me who get hurt. You don't seriously blame yourself for what happened to her, do you? Somebody got to her, to strike back at me. Someone who knew me well enough to know that I'd hesitate to fight back. And the same goes for you as well. Neither you nor Faria would have lost loved ones, if it wasn't for me. You're wrong. Kalzalik was the one who killed my brother, under orders from Almadria. As for Tarnagan, if it weren't for the crown contest, he'd still be alive. That and the whole damn hierarchy that makes it possible. But that's why we're fighting. To put an end to this whole messed up system that treats people as expendable. Indeed. Reading society of this blight is really the only way I know how to atone for my sins. You can't atone, Dohalim. <laughs> I know it hurts to hear, but those people are dead. No amount of soul-searching or trying to make amends is going to change that. Forgiveness, acceptance, those ships have sailed. So I just forget the harm I caused? No, the opposite, in fact. You remember, you never forget. You keep it in your heart always. And then you go on living. Not for those already passed, but for those still alive. For those still alive? Kisara's right. So long as we've still got breath in our bodies, we can make a difference in the lives of others. Lives being the operative word. That's what living's all about. Being able to still make a difference. Punishing yourself for the past won't make the pain of your conscience go away. Only fixing the problem in its stead. Is that what you're saying? That's right. You have to live for tomorrow, Dohalim, not for yesterday. And not only that, you need to live for yourself and for the change that you still can be. <sighs> I shall try. Don't forget, we've still got a mystery to solve. The Forbidden Zone, remember? Shion. Huh? Thank you. You have my deepest gratitude for what you did for Faria. Glad to be of service. I'm glad we could stop Barbara oh, yeah. without hurting her. You all did much for her as well. I'm most grateful. Oh shucks. We're on the same oh, team, right? Oh shucks. Let's move on. <laughs> what is it, Rinwell? Do you hear something again? Yeah. It's that voice. That voice? The will oh, of Dana's astral the Dana, energy. Yeah. There it is! I see it! It's all over me.
What? There's so much astral energy. But where's it all coming from? It's almost like... it's alive. Evil Force. The hell? That was the spirit channeling ceremony just now. No, it was more than that. What the hell was that? It felt like everything was on the brink of... Like the whole world was seconds from... Oblivion. It's the same vision as the one my thorns show me. A vision of impenetrable darkness that swallows up us and everything else. An empty void. A nothing so complete and dominating that there aren't even words to describe it. The end of time. The visions of the apocalypse you've been seeing. If I'd known how bad they were, I... Uh. So, everything we just saw, those were Naori's memories, right? That's right. It was as if her innermost thoughts were speaking directly to us. At least I know they weren't mine. That power flowing into her... It reminds me of Xion's thorns. If they're what's responsible for all these visions she's been having, then maybe... Maybe my thorns are made from that same astral energy? If that is the case... We just found the missing link between your thorns and what happened here three centuries ago. No, more than a link. Perhaps even the very heart of the matter. I've never felt astral energy so powerful. What was that? If it's the same energy your thorns are made of, it must be dark astral energy, right? And isn't that something only Renans have? Correct. Dark astral energy is possessed by Renans alone. And when enough astral energy gathers together, it develops its own form of sentience. If so, maybe that complete oblivion is exactly what the Renan astral energy's will is wishing for. But why? I don't know. Will can be a pretty vague thing to nail down. It's more of a feeling. Just like the will of Dana. But the will of Dana is made up of astral energy too, right? And if that's what's been showing us these visions... I don't know, should we really be getting so involved with this thing? Dana's will would never want oblivion! But you can't say that for sure! Cut it out, you two. Squabbling over theories will get us nowhere. Mm-hmm. I agree. <sighs> Let's keep moving. We don't know what's going on. If it's Dana's will showing us these memories, then I'm as clueless about its motives as any one of us. But if it could lead us to the truth, and I want to find out more. Would you like to know more? Xion's right. All we can do is keep going. If these really are Naori's memories we're watching, there could be truths in them I was never aware of. And I think they may be the kinds of truths I need to confront if we're going to keep fighting. I'm sorry about what I said earlier. 
Come on, let's go. Finally, we begin to understand what the thorns are. Yes, and their source. A ceremony that occurred three centuries ago. But we still don't know how to get rid of them. I just hope we can find a way. Soon, we might very well learn the truth behind Xion's thorns. As well as my own past. That's, that's what I'm hoping. I have to be ready to face anything. Whatever happens. I'm determined to save Xion and Dana. Nothing I learn can change that. Is this is this the end of the game? Or is this just another like, you know, you're gonna be locked out of stuff for a while? I'm gonna be honest, I'm, I don't care Do about think... Faria the pawn, so I'm just gonna skip this one. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, seeing visions. That vision we saw. It was as if it was meant specifically for us. What do you make of it? Do you still think the will of Dana might be involved somehow? I mean, if it's maybe it's trying to tell us something. But it's what? that astral energy. We're well, feeling. it could be supernatural. You know, like seeing dead people, messages from beyond the grave, ghost type stuff. That that's your grand theory? That we're being haunted? Come on, Law. Wait. He might be closer to the mark than you think. What if a person's thoughts and deeds were to somehow become indelibly etched into the ether of a place? And what if those with a connection could then somehow pick up on them? You think that's what it was? Some kind of message someone left here for us? I am merely entertaining the possibility. Whether it was Dana's will, or somehow connected to the Sovereign and Maiden's powers, I do not know. Okay, back up a sec. You're saying that if a place is full of enough astral energy, it can somehow show us events that happened centuries ago? More to the point, how does that much astral energy gather in one place anyway? Seems unlikely it happened naturally. Whatever it was, it survived here intact for 300 years. Whoever left it for us, the strength of their intent is beyond doubt. The strength of their intent? <sighs> I mean, there's only two people who that could be, right? The two people involved in the ceremony, Alfin and Naori. Look at our hit points. I should probably save the lemon gel for battles, so let's just do a recovery. Okay. Hold up, you guys. What is it? Now, what oh, I've got livestock. Over there. I'm curious what we'll find. That's the room you visited in your past, right? Sure. We can check it out. This looks like some kind of research facility. A laboratory secreted away in the Forbidden Zone. Why am I past being surprised at this point? Looks pretty deserted. Let's check it out. It might give us a new lead. For the people of Lenigus, the Forbidden Zone is the stuff of dreams. Yet here I am, standing within its hallowed halls. It's off-limits even for lords, then? Talk about an exclusive club. Being exclusive is one thing, but how many important facilities let in only the Sovereign? Doesn't that seem a little strange? Strange doesn't cover it. If it was only one room, maybe. But a place on this scale? How do they keep it from falling into ruin? Whoever the Sovereign is, they can't manage the upkeep of this whole place themselves. Did no one ever talk about it when you were growing up? No, not that I can remember. Then again, Sovereigns and Forbidden Zones weren't exactly breakfast table conversations. The Forbidden Zone is a hallowed place, at one with the Sovereign's authority, grounds of the one true ruler who presides over all Renans. That is what we believed this place to be. No, what we were made to believe it was. But now, it is finally time to discover this area's true purpose. 
and why it was kept hidden behind the scenes for so long. That's what we're here to find out. Hmm. I think I can make this work. Well, can you make head or tail of it? These are experiment records, by the looks of it. Reams of them, dating back hundreds of years. Let's see. A composite being capable of controlling Danon astral energy, so as to convert its molecular and elemental makeup. The creation of a governing central figure, taking the form of a Danon. Codename Sovereign. Sovereign? Wait, there's more. Research into utilizing force field crystals for the purpose of stable astral energy containment. That must be the master course. With all this raw data, there's bound to be records here somewhere about the Maiden and the Lords, too. About the Lords? Why would they be on there? Think about it. The Lord's crests are clearly of a piece with those of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. Not to mention the fact that the contenders to the Crown are selected from otherwise regular Renan citizens. In other words, it may be that all Renans are unwittingly being made subject to some kind of... grand scheme. Hmm. What about the Sovereign? Does it say anything else? Okay. Where do I start? All I've read so far is the headlines. There's so much here. To sift through all of it would require specialized... Wait. What is it? Did you find something? It's a list of names. With the title, Test Subjects, Sovereign. It's your call. Read it. There must be dozens of test subjects listed here. Hundreds even. All of them failures. Wait. I think I've found one that was successful. Which would be Alfin. Test subject number 1273. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Alfin. <sighs> they re-engineered me. Right here in this lab. Alfin. It's fine, really. What about the others? Was I the only one? Test subject number 10105. Oh, God. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Volron. Ah. Volron? But that means... He's only sovereign because someone made him that way, too. He's the last one. In three centuries worth of records, you and Volron are the only two subjects on whom the experiment was a success. <laughs> but what about the winners of the um, crown contests? Does yeah. this mean that none of them were ever crowned sovereign after all? I guess not. Then what happened victory, to them? The Sovereign shall return to Rena and rule over Rena and Lenegus combined. When a new Sovereign is decided, the outgoing Monarch shall relinquish their post and live out the rest of their days on Rena. So we were told. But according to these records, there have only ever been two Sovereigns, neither of whom had anything to do with the Crown Contest. It's so all lies, defin definitely including a third the part party. of the Sovereign residing in Rena behind all this the crown contest was never about deciding a new ruler it must always have been devised for some other purpose it was devised for gathering astral energy true, and someone making the renaissance been in charge right? for the past three centuries right if it wasn't the sovereign then who was it crown contests have been held this whole time in spite of the fact that there was already a sovereign me Meaning that for the past 300 years, someone out there has to have been maintaining that lie. 
The same person I'm willing to bet is behind all this. The Red Woman? It's possible. But that doesn't necessarily mean she's the mastermind behind this scheme. She could be working for someone else. Someone back on the Renan homeworld. I don't know if anyone is even on Rena. Either way, it's fair to say she's definitely involved somehow. What about the data records? Is there no other information that could help us? Not that I can see. Just file upon file of experiment results. There's nothing here about who's behind all this, or what their endgame is, unfortunately. I've barely managed to scratch the surface, mind you. You won't be able to read through it all, but you're welcome to take a look through what you can, while we're here. I'll do that. So this is where Alfin became the Sovereign, and Volron as well. The significance of this location would suggest... Hey! It looks like the terminals in here turned on, too. We should look through them. They might contain valuable information. Maybe. Only two sovereigns in over 300 years. So why has the experiment only succeeded twice in all this time? And if that's the case, why keep on doing it? Was there really no other way? Or could there be some other reason? Dohalim. <laughs> Forgive me. Alfin. I'm fine. I'm just a little shaken, that's all. I knew what I was already, so it's not like it's a surprise or anything. But it's strange. I've got all this rage inside of me, but I don't even know who it's for. I'm scared that I'll put a face to it, just to have someone to blame. If that were to happen, then I... No. Then we'd help you fight it, before you ever got that far. Wouldn't we, everyone? Yeah. We wouldn't just sit by and watch you spiral out of control. That's right. No good can come from being consumed by hatred. If you ever start to lose your way, you can count on us to guide you back. To remind you where home is. And I would be happy to lend an attentive ear, should you ever have need. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. I think I'll be okay now. Power of friendship. Each crown contest, five of the best qualified members of the Renan populace are chosen to act as lords vying to serve the next sovereign. During that tenure, they are granted level three authority as well as one of five elemental realms to administer in his corresponding master core. They are also assigned an ID crest indicating their designated element. The selection process is based only on astral art artistry and physical and mental aptitude. Other variables such as age have no bearing whatsoever. Because only the strongest go on to become lords, the position itself does not inherently make an individual any stronger. It should be noted, however, that lords are not the only individuals cap capable of drawing out a master course power. All Renans must take part in the selection process and acceptance of the position is mandatory. It is not allowed for those deemed suitable to decline. Furthermore, in the event that an acting lord is incapacitated and can no longer serve in their position, a replacement must be quickly prepared. What? Okay. Following his report on the second successful case of Sovereign Test Subjects Experimentation. Yep, Voron. Although Subject possesses high latent potential, it exhibits significant mental instability along with a strong distaste for following orders. As such, it risks the risks it possess, uh, possesses surpass even those of the last successful subject, itself a failure, and is therefore under consideration for disposal. Addendum. This is the first successful case in 300 years. Previously mentioned risk factors are now mitigated due to established control protocols. Subject is to be evaluated under the assumption that Plan 2 will proceed and will be dispatched to Dana under the guise of serving as a lord. Wait. We'll proceed and we'll be dispatched to... Dana under the guise of serving as a lord. I mean, that, that's still Volron, right? Because... Right? Yeah. 
plan two. Master cores are instruments of power containing astral energy that belongs to one of the six elements. Five of these master cores, those with earth, water, fire, wind, light, are loaned to Renan lords at the time of the crown contest. Only the dark master core is maintained inside the Forbidden Zone until the Renesalma is ready to be reformed, its existence kept top secret. Underneath the master core's spherical outer layer is a force field crystal used for the purpose of astral energy containment and stabilization. Inside the force field, astral energy is stored in a dormant state. For the duration of their tenure, each lord competes in the crown contest to amass their allotted type of astral energy. In the event of the an emergency, each lord may be allowed to withdraw from their respective stock of astral ener energy as necessary. However, the extent allowed is determined based on their own individual strength. Addendum 1. Design flaws have been discovered in how the Ren Renis Alma materializes. Be advised that active master cores may resonate with other master cores located in close proximity and become unstable. Due to successful regeneration of the Renis Alma, Master cores will cease to be deployed and the crown contest will be permanently halted. Permanently halted? Spirit cores are end terminals used for the collection of astral energy. When embedded in a biological subject, it establishes connections throughout its body. These connections are used to amass astral energy generated from physical activity which is then emitted from the host's body itself. Because this emitted energy is prone to diffuse, the host must be placed within range of a spirit vessel for the energy to be collected. This means that Danas must be employed to harvest the astral energy for the purpose of the crown contest. Given the difficulty in producing them, it is advised that spirit cores be retrieved from host bodies and reused upon their death. Okay. Spirit cores can also be embedded in zoogles to control them via astral arts. Increased physical load on a host body tends to produce increased astral energy emissions. Final confirmation of ideal workload to impose on host bodies without inducing death for maximum astral energy yields is still pending. Okay, so far nothing like... Holy shit! A large-scale astral energy converter that primarily converts the elemental composition of Dana's astral en energy and transmits it to Rena. Activation and control of astral energy conversion is achieved by placing the Sovereign, Maiden, and the Renis Alma within the central core of Linigus. It, it is a comprised of classified and essential personnel residence zones around a large conduit, along with a defensive layer surrounding them. This outer layer is deployed upon activation, unlocking the central conduit while simultaneously functioning as a stabilization mechanism. Due to its design, deployment of the outer layer is expected to cause damage to residential zones. However, because that only takes place during the final stage of the spirit channeling ceremony, no contingency plan to address said damage is needed. Until that phase, Linicus serves as the central base of operations for the management and execution of the crown contest on Dana. Any personnel with level 3 authority or lower is strictly forbidden from the classified zone. Any violators will be immediately executed. So this entire satellite is just made to be a energy converter of all the astral energy from Dana and filter it down to Rena. That's all it is. And then the, we know what the harvest is. We we were in it. A massive spirit vessel placed on Dana for the spirit channeling ceremony. It serves as the tip of Linigus's conduit from which it separates. Upon landing in Dana waters, it extends two sets of conducting pathways. The vertical pathways connect to the center of Dana. Meanwhile, the horizontal pathways proceed to envelop the entire surface. Once activated, it links to the biological spirit vessel placed in each realm, efficiently harvesting the planet's astral energy and mass. The accumulated energy is then transmitted to Rena via Linigus. Because construction and adjustment takes place in the Forbidden Zone regulator area, Linigus's outer layer must be deployed prior to launch. Intended to function semi-autonomously, only maintenance personnel are expected to manually interface with it when necessary. Detachable Harvester 1 was lost on Dan after exploding due to the rampancy exhibited by the Sovereign. Which I guess would be me? Or, well, Alfin? Detachable Harvester's 2 landing point will remain the same as that of the previous model. This is due to the explosion of the previous model, which altered the planetary topography, enabling easier connection to the center of Dana. Hmm...
sedative mask? Oh. A device covering the wearer's whole face that restricts their mental activity. It was developed for the purpose of pacifying prisoners. Medical applications are also recognized, particularly as a means of preventing patients from sustaining mental trauma. However, doing so is not recommended, as prolonged use of the device carries the risk of inducing a number of adverse side effects. Due to the loss of production facilities incurred from the partial destruction of Lenigas, additional devices will no longer be manufactured. Which would have been after Alfin became sovereign. So that's what he was wearing, a sedative mask. After receiving reports of a robust new form of rule emerges, emerging in Dana's water realm, a study was commissioned to investigate the matter in depth. This system is unique in that it elevates only the Lord as the supreme authority while relegating both Renans and Danans alike to enslavement. Test Subject 10105 serves as the realm's current Lord and has achieved this without the use of any special powers, drugs, or special devices. Rather, it has done so by sheer governance. Given this method's effectiveness as population control, monitoring of the situation will continue. They call the test subject uh, it. Collapse of cognitive facilities via extreme mental repression rooted in violence and fear has proven to be key in this to this style of rule. Once a subject loses its autonomy, they become desensitized to fear and subsequently cease to prioritize even their own personal safety. Though such a state is ill-suited for commanding officers, it remains an effective way to cultivate disposable infantry and slaves for manual labor. Soldiers and Linicus who have undergone this treatment will be asked to secure classified sectors as a trial. The results will be monitored. Again, nothing too crazy in any of these terminals. Oh, the Sovereign acts as Linicus' central control device for the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. Each one is granted level 2 authority and an ID crest. A Danon subject serves as the base of its creation. In theory, ideal candidates possess equal affinity for every astral element. However, such aptitude is statistically rare to uncover within real-world conditions. As a result, most subjects die during the adjustment period, and stability is still not guaranteed for those who survive it. The, this instability, coupled with the Sovereign's power of astral manipulation, pose a high risk to the security of Linigus if left unchecked. As such, stabilization measures must be put in place via the support mechanisms when utilizing the Sovereign in the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. No effective alternate methods to perform the ceremony have been found. Trials on Dana subjects are authorized to continue. Unit 2 adjustments are a success. Subsequent adjustments are to be put on hold while extended observations take place. The maiden acts as the sovereign support mechanism for the spirit channeling ceremony. Each one is granted level 2 authority and an ID crest. A Renan subject serves its functions, providing the Sovereign with the supplemental dark astral it lacks in tandem with the Renasalma. During the ceremony, it is partially re or partly responsible for astral energy conversion, as well as maintaining stability over the Sovereign's own powers. Additionally, the, the degree of intimacy between it and the Sovereign has been observed to positively impact the level of stability of both subjects. Because of this, trial activations of the Sovereign without the Maiden present are expressly forbidden. Furthermore, neither the Sovereign nor the Maiden are to be informed about the details of the Spirit Channeling plan. Mental instability in the Maiden has been deemed the cause of the past Sovereign's rampancy. Countermeasures must be considered. In line with plan adjustments, the current subject will have its Maiden registration revoked and be returned to its original household. Okay. So the Sovereign is just there to do the ceremony of channeling energy into Rena, And then the Maiden is there to make sure that the Sovereign doesn't go out of control? But in this case, Naori was unstable? I'm assuming the Thorns? And so then Alfin went rampant? Rampant?
Wait, hold on. I missed the thing. And this was uh, our room that we started in, right? Three of them. I've used a couple. I don't know if we'll ever get back here, so I'm just going to take the two. Flashback. Well, there's Alfin. Mayori, I... I... Don't talk. I have to do this. I gave you my word that I'd help you return to Dana. The next time you open your eyes, you'll be home. But you... My place is here with my people. I still have a duty to fulfill. I'm sorry for what you've endured. Rena never should have dragged you into this. It's not your burden to bear. But... The mask contains a sedative. It should keep your mind from tearing itself apart any further. Let yourself go to sleep. This should help with the pain. Time to go, Elfin. Farewell. Mayori. His injuries are worse than I thought. Short-term treatment isn't going to cut it. I'll have to switch the healing pod to long-term hibernation mode. The chance of surviving hibernation's less than 10%? And worse. Long-term use of the mask carries a high risk of damaging his mind and nervous system. But... Uh, if I don't head back, Lenigus will be nothing but ashes, and this starship along with it. I don't know if I can fulfill my promise to you, Alfin. But if... Doing this will grant you even the slightest chance. I have to try. I hope it's enough. Please, live for me, Alfin. That vision. It must have been from when Naori helped Alfin escape Lenigus. Oh, she sure went above and beyond was? the call of duty. Even with Lenigus crumbling down around her, she chose to stay put with her people. So that's why you lost your memories and sense of pain, and why you were asleep for that whole time. It was all the result of one agonizing decision Naori made to save your life. Yeah. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't even be alive today. I owe her everything. More than I could ever hope to repay. Now that you know how she felt, how do you plan on honoring her wishes? She kept her promise. If the Renan people she fought so desperately to protect are at risk from a malevolent force, then I owe it to her to carry on her fight. Naori was the one who put that mask on me. It made me Iron Mask. She did made it to me Iron your Man. soul from tearing itself apart. Hold on, let me... I've been meaning to change... Megasonic Thrust for a bit. What am I not using? Eternal Devastation? No, no, no. I am using Eternal Devastation. That's right there. 
Double de Demon Fang? Raining Slash? Am I I'm not using Raining Slash. What, which one was that? Sharpens the mind before releasing a Forceful Sword Slash. Uh, I mean, sure. Sure, why not? She knew you might lose your memories and sense of pain as a result. But more than anything, she wanted you to survive. And you did. Alright, so we've not been here. This looks like we're going to the chamber where the ceremony takes place. Presumably the red woman will probably be in there. There we go. Yep, that's it. This place, we've seen this in one of Naori's memories. Of course. After 300 years, this is where it was held. The spirit channeling ceremony. This is where the Renis Alma was. So this is the place where you and Naori... Mm -hmm. The Renis Alma isn't here now. Nor is the Red Woman, it seems. I know it's difficult, Alfin. But there will be time to dwell on the past later. For now, we need to keep moving. Come on. Uh... What is this? Is it the work of Dana's will again? It's been a year since the ceremony. That day, I shut away inside of myself the power that caused Elfin to lose control. Since then, my visions of the future have grown more and more fearsome. Is this another memory? No, it's different this time. It's like she's speaking directly to us. <sighs> What we did back then. Not so much as a day passes when I don't think about it. About what was done to us. All in the name of a ceremony. The purpose of which we were never even told. As Sovereign, they linked Elfin's consciousness to Lenigus itself. The Renis Alma was intended to control his power, lest anything should slip through its cracks. That day, as Maiden, my role was to temper his power. I was meant to guide it forth, and give shape to the strength inside of him. Linked to Lenicus itself? But then, everything that's been happening... But that power showed me a vision. A vision of oblivion. When I realized that vision was a prophecy of the apocalypse we were about to unleash, I couldn't go through with it. But without a maiden, the ceremony was doomed. Alfin lashed out, his consciousness no longer his own. I did what I could. Using my abilities as the maiden, I tried to seal that power away inside of me. But it was too late. Lanigus had already been brought to its knees. Thousands upon thousands of lives so cruelly snuffed out. All because of me. Because of what I had done. With the destructive force now slumbering inside of me, I knew I had to find a way to dispose of it. Anything to make up for my failure. But I didn't know how. The 
Especially since that power was astral energy itself. In which case, ironically enough, the Renis Alma seemed to be my best bet. That, at least, would hold the astral energy dormant. Assuming that no malevolent third party got to it first. <laughs> With the oh. Sovereign and Maiden's combined power, perhaps I could shift the chaotic energy inside me into the Renis Alma instead. That's what I hoped, but alas, it was not to be. The Renis Alma was lost, and Alfin the Sovereign was in a starship bound for Dana. My only choice was to seal away the destructive force inside of me using my powers as the Maiden, to buy the world what little time I could. The time needed for a new Renis Alma to be crafted, and for a new Sovereign to appear. Even if by doing so, it meant I would be passing the curse onto my descendants as well. Please, forgive me. I never meant to burden the future world with this threat, too. I only wish that there was something more I could have done. Wait, you can't just... Naori. <sighs> hmm. That message just now, was it directly from Naori? Or was it the Danon voice speaking through her? We've got new outfits. Magically. <laughs> What? These are the clothes that Naori and I wore during the ceremony three centuries ago. So you're saying this is the Maiden's outfit? That's right. These clothes are designed to resonate with the Sovereign and Maiden's abilities. They focus and enhance them. And they appeared now because... Naori must have left them here for the new Sovereign and Maiden. Knowing the day would come when they would need them in their fight against the Thorns. These outfits are directly linked to the answers we've been chasing this whole time. If they're here, it must mean it was Naori's will for us to find those answers as well. Locating the Renis Alma would allow us to neutralize the dark astral energy inside Xion, thereby silencing her Thorns. Is that what Naori's suggesting? It makes sense. After all, Master Cores and Spirit Vessels are both able to prevent the astral energy inside them from developing sentience. By that logic, it would stand to reason that the Renis Alma would have the same ability on a larger scale. We have a Maiden and Sovereign. Now all we need is the Renis Alma, and we'll finally be able to free you of your thorns. Shion. It's possible? You really think so? I do. We can rid you of your thorns and stop the world from falling to oblivion. However, the spirit channeling ceremony already failed once. Even if our goal is different this time, we can't be sure the same thing won't happen again. We should take care not to be too optimistic. You're right. It's the barest sliver of a chance. But if there's even the slightest hope it can work, I'm willing to stake everything I've got on it. I... I know it's too early to let myself feel relieved, but... I just can't seem to help it. Just hearing there's the slightest chance, even though I know the world's still in great peril... It's selfish of me, I know, but... But still... It's okay no, to have it hope. isn't! You found hope to believe in. It'd be strange if you weren't over the moon about it. Rinwell's right. We can rid you of your curse and still save the world at the same time. Thank you. Naori entrusted us with the fate of all humanity. 
Now, it's up to us to prove that trust was well placed. Starting with a little game called Hunt the Renis Alma. Yeah, we've come all this way. Now we just need to search Lenigus and Rena until we find it. Yeah, we can protect the world and save Xion at the same time. I too shall lend my services. My knowledge of Renan lore is bound to be a useful asset. And they say modesty is dead. <laughs> Miracles just seem to follow wherever you go, huh? How do you know it's me they're following? We're all in this together, Xion. You included. Now let's get moving, shall we? Last I heard, we had an apocalypse to stop. <laughs> Thank you, Nayori. So Nayori sealed away the power that made me lose control of myself. She stopped my rampage and saved my life. But then, that power she'd sealed away was passed down to you. I'm so sorry, Xion. It's my fault that you're cursed. You're wrong. What happened to you was because of the ceremony and Nayori's attempt to stop Oblivion. You paid a heavy price for it and then fell asleep for 300 years. The reason you lost your memories is the reason for your curse. The, the thorns. thorns. It all leads back to them. But once they're gone, we can finally put an end to all this. When my thorns are gone, I never dared to dream that such a thing could be possible. No, the truth is, I think maybe I've always been dreaming about a life without my thorns. The touch of my family, or playing with my friends, Holding hands with Rinwell, or giving Law a deserved smack, embracing everyone, all the normal things that people do together. I always wished I could experience them for myself and finally know what they were like. Is it really okay for me to believe it can happen? I'm so scared of getting my hopes up. What if it doesn't work out in the end and... That's not going to happen. I'm here to make sure it won't. Forget fate or destiny or anything else. We're going to live. <sighs> yeah, we're going to live, damn it. Life. There are a lot of things you still want to do, right? Yeah, you're right. It's such a strange feeling. I know that we've still got plenty of fighting up ahead. And it's for my sake. So I can live. You're worth fighting for. I believe you, Alfin. Good. I'll keep on fighting, for as long as it takes, until our future is finally in our hands. Ah. Ah. Okay, what's this? Advancing healing art that restores all allies' HP. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, I think I'll take that. Thank you very much. I don't know how, how often the AI activates that, though. The rod extension. Boom! Penetration plus 40. So many boards. What's this one? Sure. What? Uh, yep, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's okay. That's also okay. Penetration plus 30, I will take it. Faster AG recovery is also nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, the sword has definitely changed. Looks cool. I like it. Overall, I like the outfits. I think they look pretty cool. Sounds like this Naori chick had quite the big heart. Her position demanded nothing less from the sound of things. She didn't focus on differences, least of all those between Renans and Danans. Yeah, 
It was Naori who first showed me that such a thing was even possible. And then she saved my life by sending me back home to Dana. Not only that, but she willingly stayed behind on Lenigus for the sake of her people. It sounds like she was quite the hero, all right. A truly caring person. That's as if walls meant nothing to her. The ones separating the Renans from the Danans, or herself from others. She had no need for them. Which basically meant that she never had anything to break down in the first place, huh? Yeah. I think you may be right about that. You inherited that legacy. Her wish for the world. Don't I know it? She's kind of like a lodestar guiding our way. Showing us what we can aspire to. Okay, friends. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. We got a lot of knowledge dropped on us in, in this one. You know, actually learning about everything that happened. So I'm kind of curious how much more is left. Because I definitely feel like we're in the end game here. I don't know if we're ever going to make it to Rena, But who knows? Who knows? Maybe we will. But thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you all uh, next time. Take care, everybody.